Uh, there has been some technology that's come into the vehicle. We've, we've got stability control systems now, uh, two mode suspensions. We have race and, and uh, street settings, a lot of things like that. A beautiful seven inch uh, LCD screen or TFT screen, they call it, eight inch, a lot of cool technology. But what this car hasn't forgotten that it's a Viper. So it's an emotional machine. It, it's, it's gorgeous. It was designed to really uh, make grown ups uh, kind of weak at the knees. <laughs> so it's a, there's a lot of sculpture. But as is true with every SRT product, everything is, has a purpose. Every scoop, uh, the brake ducts, uh, exhausters, uh, cold air intake for the engine, uh, whether it's shaped for downforce, uh, the beauty and the downforce work together to create something that truly is about form and function. And we, we really evolved the design of the Viper. We wanted to kind of, we had a choice to make whether we would revolutionize it and go a different place, but we chose to evolve it. It has such a presence and such a, a place in the minds of, of the enthusiasts that we wanted to kind of carefully move along the, the aesthetics of the Viper without ever forgetting where we're from. So that's exactly what 2013 Viper's all about. Uh, people from all over the world will recognize it, whether you're a kid who's 12 or a kid who's 80 years old, <laughs> you should be able to recognize it as a Viper. And hopefully um, you'll enjoy it as much as we did making it. So the 2013 SRT Viper has a CD of 0.364, which is quite an accomplishment. Most supercars have a fairly high drag number because of the aerodynamic down downforce that's created. In this way, this vehicle has been designed to be very stable, have negative lift, but also be as slippery as possible. Uh, we've, we've managed a lot of the airflow through the car as well as over the car. Uh, like the exhauster here, in the past this has been more of an aesthetic detail, now it actually is really functional. It relieves a lot of pressure from behind the, the wheel arch and a little heat from the engine bay. We have another uh, wonderful detail here. This is actually a differential cooling duct, which captures a little bit of air that races on the body side of the car, puts it down, not only cooling the differential, but also creating a little bit more, more pressure to evacuate air underneath the car. Uh, this detail here is actually, again, another wheelhouse exhauster that is functional, that relieves pressure. And the underneath the vehicle, you can't quite see it, but you can see parts of it. This is what we call a tuned diffuser. This actually continues on a few feet underneath the car and really uses that, that air coming out from under the car to suck it down against the road, at the same time creating the least amount of turbulence possible. But one of the areas of the car that, that does the most work is actually this integrated spoiler. This is what we call a kind of a duckbill spoiler. It's, at, it's as far back as we can get it, as high up as we can get it, uh, which in the legal um, dimensions. This actually does create negative lift, a little bit of downforce, and gives the car absolute stability at high speed. This vehicle should do well over 200 miles per hour, roughly around 206 miles per hour, and be rock solid doing so.